Hi, in this video we're going to learn how to draw a three-dimensional perspective of cyclohexane, which is known as the chair conformation. After that, we're going to be looking at how that first chair conformation, how that molecule can move and change into different conformations, different chair conformations, also the boat, half chair, etc. So the first thing to pull your attention to is this cyclohexane as it's typically drawn with its six carbons at the vertices and the implicit hydrogens at each position, which are not shown. Now, as it's drawn, it's very difficult to understand and to visualize the three-dimensional perspective of the cyclohexane rings, which include any physical interactions that might occur between different groups on a cyclohexane ring. So in order to better understand the three-dimensional perspective of the molecule, we take the cyclohexane ring and we turn it on its side so that the cyclohexane ring goes parallel with the floor instead of perpendicular to the floor as it's drawn now. When we do that, we end up with three carbons at the front of the molecule, and these are represented by these three carbons here down below. And we end up with three carbons at the back of the molecule. These are represented by these three carbons in the back here. The next thing to observe, there are certain atoms, in this case hydrogens, that are pointing straight up and straight down, that are completely vertical, and those are known as the axial hydrogens, as if they were part of the axis of the Earth. The other types of substituents, in this case hydrogens, are known as equatorial substituents, and they point around the edges of the molecule, more to the side, and those are known as equatorial hydrogens. Notice also that some of these substituents are pointing up and some of the substituents are pointing down. For example, we have three axial substituents pointing up and we have three axial substituents pointing down. We also have three equatorial substituents pointing up. Notice if I start at the carbon and I draw a line towards the hydrogen, eventually I would get up to the ceiling. So it's pointing up, same thing with this one in the back, same thing with this one here. So three equatorial substituents point up. There are also three equatorial substituents that point down. A couple of things to notice along with this. When we have an equatorial up substituent on one carbon, on the next carbon, the substituent pointing up is axial. Equatorial up, axial up. Equatorial up, axial up. They alternate. Similarly, axial down, equatorial down. Axial down, equatorial down. The next thing we're going to do is to draw a cyclohexane. What we're going to do first is to draw the framework of the molecule. So we're going to draw a V that represents the back carbons, two parallel lines to represent these two bonds on the side, and then an upward V to represent the front carbons. So start by drawing a downward V. Notice that the line should end at approximately the same point. Then two angled side bonds. They should be parallel to each other and end at the same point again. Finally, an upward pointed V. Notice that we have three sets of parallel lines in the molecule. So this is the basics of the chair. A couple of key mistakes. Don't draw it as if it's a wiener dog, like that. Don't be sloppy when you draw it. Make sure those angles are parallel. So all of these would be incorrect ways to draw a chair. Next thing is drawing in the substituents. So we'll redraw the chair. And first we'll add in the axial substituents. 
Notice that they always come out of the point of the V, just like when we drew tetrahedral structures. So out of the point of the V comes the downward axial position, upward V, upward axial, downward V, downward axial, and so on. And they alternate going around the ring. So in red, I've drawn the axial substituents. We also have equatorial substituents. And the big thing to notice there is that they are parallel with one of the carbon-carbon bonds that's one bond away from them. So there are some parallel bonds there. Those are two equatorial substituents. More equatorial substituents. And then finally, the last one's parallel with the side bonds. The last equatorial substituents. So that's how we draw both the chair structure and the substituents off of the chair. Remember that we can recognize if a substituent is pointing up or pointing down by starting at the carbon and pointing towards the substituent, and if that arrow ends up at the ceiling eventually, then that's an, an upward position. If it's pointing down, then that's a substituent that's pointing down. When we convert between a cyclohexane ring and a chair, we have to make sure that we keep the same, the molecule the same. For example, if we have a structure like this, and we will represent the bromine in blue and the hydroxyl in red. Notice that the hydroxyl substituent is pointing down, and the bromine substituent is pointing up. The wedge and the dash are, is what's giving us that information. So when we go to draw the cyclohexane ring, we have to preserve those configurations. We can start with the hydroxyl group. And the best idea first is to build the model and then to draw the chair. When we do that, this hydroxyl group is pointing down. We can choose any one of these carbons and we make sure that that hydroxyl is pointing down. The bromine, which is one carbon beside it, needs to be pointing up. Now the only position pointing up on that carbon because it's an upward V is an axial up position. There are other ways this chair could have been drawn and still be the same molecule. For example, on the bottom, I've drawn a different version. In fact, it's a different conformation of the same molecule.